Hi, I'm Jennifer Bourne of jenniferbourne.com, and I'm happy that you're here. Today I'm talking about something uh, a little more personal. I want to talk about how your need for personal fulfillment might be sabotaging the success of your freelance business. I want to ask, have you ever lowered your rates to land a client? Kept your rates low to keep a client? Lowered an invoice to avoid making a client mad? Withheld your opinions to avoid an argument? Or made revisions to a project you didn't believe in just to be easy to work with? If you said yes to any of those, this article is totally for you. I have done all of these things, which is why I feel like I can talk to you about them today. Now, you chose to be a freelancer, to blaze your own path, free from the shackles of a windowless cube, a commute, and less than stellar work environments. You made the brave leap and went into business for yourself, and you now live the freelance life, working at home, maybe in your pajamas, and things are good. But you're alone most of the day, and at first, while it's a nice change and you kind of relish in that solitude, you eventually begin to notice that you're alone a lot, and you begin to crave interaction and validation and connection with other people. You need to know that people care about you, and you need to feel liked and appreciated, respected, trusted, and valued, as these feelings translate into how you view your own self-worth. But what happens when your desires to be liked and validated collide with being a freelance business owner? What happens when the need to be liked and valued and accepted isn't being met in your personal life? When that's the case, it is far too easy to then turn to your business and your client relationships to fill that void. Measuring your value or your worth by things like the number of sales you close or the testimonials you receive is dangerous for your mental health and it's dangerous for your business. Freelancers who work alone often unknowingly slide into this precarious situation, especially in the early years of owning and growing a business. When you're working at night and day to get a new business off the ground, it can be all-consuming. Hobbies fade away and your business becomes your hobby. At one point in time, I remember laughing at somebody and saying, hobby, what are you talking about? My business is my hobby. When you're in this stage, relationships start to slip. You find yourself prioritizing clients over friends and family, and you start looking to your business for fulfillment and happiness. And as a result, decisions are being made that might bite you in the butt later on. The problem is that many freelancers end up looking to their business for personal fulfillment and they don't even realize that they're doing it. I found myself in this exact same situation. I didn't know I was sabotaging my long, my own success, my long-term success for a short-term feel-good moment. I patted myself on the back for a 100% close rate. I patted myself on the back working with everybody I knew. I was proud of how easy I was to work with. I owned being affordable because my clients loved me for it. At the same time, I was undercharging and my income didn't align with my efforts. I took a neutral, it took a neutral, unbiased third party to punch me in the face and wake me up, right? When I was attending a business event, a speaker, was giving a really fantastic presentation. And she asked, where are you in your business, right? Where are you in your business looking to fulfill needs that are not being met in your personal life? And like I said, it was a smack in the face. If you're in the same boat, I have some help. If you don't know whether or not you're in the same boat, I'm gonna point out a few ways this might be showing up in your business. The first way is that you undercharge new clients to get more yeses and you resist raising your rates. When I first began freelancing, I joined a local networking group. And when I landed my first client, I was so excited. I felt like Sally Field in her Oscar accepted speech saying, you like me, you really like me. 
Then I landed another client and another and another and another. Every person I spoke to hired me. Soon, almost every member of that networking group was a client of mine. Unfortunately, this came with dire consequences. I had no life. I was working like a dog, and I wasn't earning as much as I should have been in comparison. It was suggested to me on multiple times that I raise my rates, but I resisted because it meant some people might say no. And maybe that felt like if they said no, that they didn't really like me or they didn't trust me or they didn't think that I was good. What I came to realize was that by keeping my fees low, I always got a yes. And the more yeses I got, the better I felt about myself. (laughs) I mean, yikes. That's not a good place to be as a business owner. The second place this shows up in your business is maybe you undercharge for hourly work or you don't charge for all of the time you spent on a project. Today, I understand my value. I confidently charge fees that are equal to the value that I deliver. I charge what I am worth, and I get it. I work with amazing clients who are happy to pay my full rate. But I wasn't always in this situation. As a new freelancer, I undercharged existing clients, or sometimes I didn't charge for all the time I spent on projects. I'd spend eight hours on a project, but only bill maybe four or six, because I felt bad charging them that much. And I worried that maybe they might get mad at that cost. Or I'd flat rate a project up front based on what I thought they would pay and be happy with, not based on the actual hours that it was going to take. This meant I was often working at a really low, really sad hourly rate. At the time, I didn't really have a lot of confidence in my ability to command higher fees. I didn't have a lot of confidence in myself as a designer. I was still learning how to price projects, communicate my value, and I was looking to my clients and my business to determine my self-worth. The result was me working 16 to 18 hour days, six to seven days a week. I was always exhausted, I was overworked, I was underpaid, and I had no life. You might start seeing a pattern with the, with the examples I'm sharing. The third place this shows up in your business is you agree with all requests from your clients because it makes them happy. Designers and developers are problem solvers. Clients hire us to solve problems, to create solutions, and to do it in a beautiful way. We evaluate the objective at hand, we define the problem and the constraints, we do research and testing, create solutions, and deliver what the client wants. This process is derailed sometimes, however, by designers and developers who care more about making the client happy than ensuring the desired long-term results that the client wants. I learned this lesson kind of the hard way. I landed a really big name client and I wanted to make sure that they loved me. I worked extra hard on the design drafts and I knew I nailed it. It was exactly what they needed to achieve their goals. And I was proud of the design. I presented the concept to the client and they started making changes and they had suggestions. They wanted to add some elements because a friend said they needed to. They wanted to move some things around because they read an article that recommended it. They wanted to change some colors because they heard a speaker at an event discuss a higher converting color. And I said, yes. I said, sure, no problem, I can do that. Sure, of course, whatever you need. Yes, definitely, I can do that. And I did. I made all the changes the client wanted and the client was ecstatic. They raved about how easy I was to work with. They loved that I was flexible. They were happy and it made me feel great. It made me feel appreciated, it made me feel loved. I felt great about myself. Then the piece was printed. It went out into the wild and it failed miserably. The client circled back to me and they weren't happy. The thing is, I didn't stand up for my design. I didn't educate the client. I didn't explain my design thinking. I didn't push back. I didn't dig deeper about why they were making the vision requests they were making. I said yes to everything they wanted and compromised the design and the results because I wanted to feel good about myself. I didn't do what was best for the project. Again, not a good place to be. Clients want and need a solution. When they make a request that will affect the target business objective, they rely on you to raise 
those challenges and say, ha ha, wait a second, maybe we shouldn't do this. We need to consider the implications of what this revision might do. We need to look at what potential pitfalls may show up and we need to steer them in the right direction. Then you have to provide your expert opinion. They hired you to be an expert. They need you to show up as one. They want you to stay focused on the objective and deliver the results, not do anything they ask them to do regardless. The fourth way this shows up in your business is when you allow boundaries to be trampled to avoid making a client mad. Setting clear expectations and boundaries is critical to building healthy, respectful, long-lasting relationships. The key to doing this successfully is actually enforcing your expectations and boundaries, which is where many freelancers fall off the wagon. You say you don't work on weekends, but you do because a client saw you on Twitter and sent you a DM and you couldn't say no. Your workday ends at 5 p.m., but when a client emails at 4.59 with a crazy request that must be done ASAP without rush fees, you respond and do the work because you don't want to make them mad. You say you value family time, but you give your clients your cell phone and you let them text you or call you at all hours of day and night. Or you let your clients know you're going to be on vacation or at a conference and unavailable, but you continue to constantly check your email. You skip sessions or time at the pool with your family to work in the room and you miss out on new experiences because you're afraid if you don't answer, they might hire someone else. By failing to enforce expectations and boundaries that you set with clients, you sacrifice your own time, right? You sacrifice your own personal freedom, and it shows clients that you undervalue yourself. The fear of making clients mad, the fear of losing clients, the fear of not having enough clients makes us do crazy things. The reality is that enforcing boundaries, right, answering to the expectations that you set, it teaches clients that you value your time and the relationship and it trains clients to do the same. So let's talk a little bit about freelancing and personal fulfillment. When my freelance business was my entire life, my sense of personal fulfillment was tied to how successful my business was, how many clients I had, and how much praise they heaped upon me. While I was happy, those moments of true fulfillment were fleeting, and I always craved more, more clients, more testimonials, more praise. I sabotaged my sanity, my time, my health, and my profits to make it happen. I was living to work instead of working to live. Over time, luckily, I restructured my business. I built systems and processes to carry the load for me. I automated administrative tasks. I established better boundaries, set clearer expectations, increased rates, and invested in more client communication and education. I also work to separate my business and personal life and find more balance between the two. As systems, higher fees, and better clients reduced the time I was spending in my business, I prioritized and invested more heavily in relationships with friends and family, in memorable experiences and travel, in hobbies that bring me joy, and in my own mental and physical health. And here's what I discovered. The more fulfilled you are in your personal life, the easier it is to show up as the leader your business needs and the expert that your clients need. Remember, clients hire you to be the expert. Your clients already have friends. If they want more friends, they can get them without spending any money. They don't hire you so you'll be their friend to tell them what they wanna hear and make them feel smart. They hire you because you know something they don't know. They hired you to lead them through a process and deliver a result that they need. They hire you to solve their problems because they don't have the skills to do it themselves. Great clients understand that they don't know what they don't know and they need you to fill in the gaps and guide them to their objective. They need you to hold the flashlight in the dark and lead them to the end of the tunnel. When you work on your business, one byproduct is that you work on yourself. So as your business grows, evolves, and elevates, you too grow, evolve, 
and elevate. In July, Born Creative, my agency, will officially be 16 years old. I have made a lot of mistakes along the way. I've learned a lot of hard lessons, and I've used each one as an opportunity to improve my craft, both as a designer and a business owner. Today, things will look way different in my business than they did in those tough early years. I say no more, way more than I say yes now, only taking on projects that are a perfect fit. I welcome no's more often because I'd rather not work on projects that drain my energy and make me dread my day. I'm confident in my rates, my work, my value. I'm confident in the difference that I can make in a business. And as a result, I charge a rate equal to the effort that I put out and the value that I deliver. And I live a lifestyle in a business that supports joyous, inspiring, fulfilling living. And now I don't work on nights and I don't work on weekends and I take at least nine weeks of vacation a year. I stand up for the solutions that I deliver and I show up as the leader my clients need. So I want you to do a little bit of reflection. If you're making any of the mistakes that I mentioned, like overworking and undercharging, not valuing your time, not enforcing boundaries or championing your work, I urge you to take some time alone and ask yourself, Are you sabotaging your potential success so your clients will like you? Are you looking to your business to meet the needs that your personal life should be meeting? And where can you make changes to adjust that? Do you need to invest more in personal relationships, in non-digital hobbies, in things that fulfill you that are separate from your business? Do you need to raise your rates? Do you need to draw stronger boundaries, right? Do you need to show up as the leader and not try to be the friend? Whether or not a client hires you says nothing about your worth and your value. It's just whether or not you're a fit at that time. That's it. So I want you to know that if you're struggling to get clients or you're hearing no, rejection has nothing to do with how amazing you are. And if you're getting 100% close rate or you're getting lots and lots of yeses, maybe it's time to raise those rates a little bit. Maybe it's time to draw some stronger boundaries and maybe it's time to elevate your business. I am Jennifer Bourne of jenniferborn.com. I'm really happy that you joined me for this video and I hope that you subscribe so you can get all future videos and content from me when they come out. Until then, I hope you have a great rest of your day.